Here's an example of a formal proof involving vector space concepts. In particular, we're going to prove the following theorem. Let V be a vector space. Let S and T be subspaces of V. Consider a new set S plus T defined by S plus T equals all vectors of the form little s plus t, where little s is in s and little t is in t. We're going to prove that this is a subspace of v. In other words, the set s plus t, formed by all these sums, is a subspace of v. So our strategy is going to be the following. So in part one of the strategy, we write down everything that is given in the statement of the theorem, namely, v is a vector space, and two, S and T are subspaces of V. Part two of our strategy. Write down what we must prove. Specifically, we need to prove that S plus T is a subspace of V, where S plus T is the set defined above. In part three, we need to devise a plan that uses what is given and ends with what must be proven. Specifically, we need to show that S plus T satisfies the criteria of being a subspace. What are these criteria? Zeros in S plus T, S plus T is closed under vector addition, and S plus T is closed under multiplication by scalars. As a warm-up, try this on your own. Try proving property A, that is, show that 0 is in S plus T. The hint is to use the fact that 0 is in S and 0 is in T. Here's our proof. First, we're going to show that 0 is in S plus T. So first we note that since S and T are subspaces, 0 is in S and 0 is in T. And therefore, by definition of S plus T, zero plus zero is in S plus T. But zero plus zero is just equal to the zero vector. So we can conclude that zero is in S plus T. This finishes the first part of our proof. Next, we need to show that S plus T is closed under vector addition. To do so, let V1 and V2 be vectors in S plus T. Now what does that mean? By definition of S plus T, we can write the following. V1 is equal to S1 plus T1, where S1 is in S and T1 is in T. We should write hats over those vectors. Let's go ahead and fill those in. And V2 is equal to S2 plus T2, where S2 is in S and T2 is in T. And therefore we can write V1 plus V2 equal to S1 plus T1, that's V1, plus S2 plus T2, that's V2. And rearranging and regrouping, we can write this as S1 plus S2 plus T1 plus T2. That last step follows from the commutative 
and associative properties of vector addition in our vector space V. So since S and T are themselves subspaces by assumption, they themselves are closed under vector addition. And so S1 plus S2 is an S and likewise T1 plus T2 is in T. So it follows that V1 plus V2 is the sum of a vector in S and a vector in T. By definition of S plus T, we conclude that V1 plus V2 is in S plus T. And so in summary, we have shown that S plus T is closed under vector addition. And finally, we need to show that S plus T is closed under multiplication by scalars. Let V be a vector in S plus T and let C be any scalar. Again, by definition of S plus T, we can write the following. V is equal to some little s plus a little t, where little s is in our subspace S, and little t is in the subspace T. And therefore, C times V is equal to C times S plus T. Let's distribute that C to get C times S plus C times T. And this follows from the distributive property of scalar multiplication over vector addition in our vector space V. But since S and T are themselves subspaces, they themselves are closed under multiplication by scalars. And hence, C times S is in subspace S, and C times T is in subspace T. And it follows that our vector C times V is the sum of a vector in S and a vector in T. By definition of the set S plus T, C times V is therefore in S plus T. And this concludes the proof that S plus T is closed under multiplication by scalars. Let's summarize what we've shown so far. A, 0, is in S plus T. B, S plus T is closed under vector addition. And C, S plus T is closed 
under multiplication by scalars. So it follows that s plus t is a subspace of our vector space v. QED, in other words, that's what we set out to prove. The proof is complete.